Hello everyone, Skylar here, and today we're going to discuss a solution to many of the problems encountered in the world, and that is personal responsibility. So let's go discuss it. Okay, so as we're discussing personal responsibility, we're going to touch on three primary topics today. The first is taking responsibility for all of our actions. The second is taking responsibility for our own feelings. And the third is going to be using language that takes responsibility for our choices and our actions. So let's go through each of these one by one and kind of break them down. So the first thing that we're going to talk about is taking responsibility for all of our actions. And one of the biggest ways that this manifests uh, in a negative way uh, is when you hear someone saying that they're just following orders or just doing their job. This kind of uh, rationalization for not taking responsibility for your actions can be very harmful, uh, not just for the person not taking responsibility for their actions, but for the people that they are acting upon uh, because it allows individuals to do things they wouldn't otherwise do and and avoid feeling bad or taking personal responsibility for those actions. So the reason that this can be negative for the person taking the actions is because it robs us of the ability to take responsibility for our own actions, which is actually very powerful. If you feel, and a lot of people I think feel this on a daily basis, if you feel like some aspect of your life is not in your control and you're not responsible for it, then you begin to feel powerless or you feel perhaps resentful like you're being controlled or told what to do. Or maybe you're doing things you have to do, which in reality is you making a choice to do something that you don't want to do, but trying not to take responsibility for making that choice for a variety of reasons. We may discuss some of those here today. So when we're talking about how our actions, not taking responsibility for our actions, can harm others, you don't need to look any further than history and how nearly all of the worst things ever done uh, to mankind by mankind um, are done by people who are able to abstract responsibility for what they're doing and blame others for that. As we mentioned before, following orders, doing your job, these kind of rationalizations allow you to do things you wouldn't otherwise do and feel like it's not your choice, it's not your responsibility, you're not the one to blame. And there are a variety of reasons why why we've actually been conditioned to believe this and to act this way. Um, there are many structures in society that that tell us from early childhood that your responsibility is to follow authority, is to do what you're told, and that the leaders, the people who make the choices, are the ones who are ultimately responsible for what happens. And this causes a plethora of horrors and issues that can be simply avoided by individuals taking responsibility for their own actions and individuals making sure that we hold individuals responsible for their actions. So it's one thing to say, I'm just doing what I'm told. It's not my fault. I'm not responsible. That only holds up so long as the wider group of individuals looks at that person and says, you know what, you are not to blame for what you did. Yes, you took this action and yes, you did it either voluntarily or perhaps under some form of duress, but usually the form of duress that we experience is uh, not a serious one. Um, it is rather a coercive one. We can get into that in more detail as well. But if you hold an individual responsible for what they've done, then they aren't able to continue persisting in, in not taking responsibility for the actions that they have performed. So when it comes to not taking responsibility for our actions, what are our motivations for doing this? We've mentioned some of them kind of in passing, but a big one for most people is a paycheck. The biggest driving force for most people in society doing things that they don't wanna do, I have to do this, it's, I don't want to, but I'm going to, like I was forced to, is typically because it's part of your job and your paycheck or your livelihood depends on it. Um, so when we talk about doing something under duress, meaning doing it under the threat of some sort of uh, retribution or punishment, losing your job, losing your means of income can be an extremely persuasive tool for making, making, for, <laughs> for trying to convince people to do things they wouldn't otherwise do. Notice sometimes I have to catch myself in my own language when I talk about this stuff. You made me do that because you threatened to take away my income. No, I chose 
to take some action that I didn't want to take because I wasn't willing to lose my income. When you put things into this framework, you start to understand the true horror behind doing some things. When someone, an individual, uh, the biggest examples of this are government related, right? Like policing or the military. When someone who's in the police or in the military goes and harms someone, goes and kills someone and says, well, I was told to, I was just following an order, just doing my job. If you take, if you reframe that from a personal responsibility standpoint, I needed a paycheck. I decided to go and commit violence on someone because I didn't want to lose my job or I didn't want to lose my paycheck. That makes it sound a lot less uh, honorable <laughs> when you put it that way, because it isn't honorable because doing harm to others or taking actions you wouldn't otherwise take because you're placing that responsibility at the feet of someone else leads to basically all of the worst things uh, that happen in the world. Uh, and even briefly, when you talk about individual actions that maybe don't come from some authority source, individuals in their mind that do horrible things typically are either blaming who they're acting on or blaming someone that acted upon them to rationalize what they're doing. If you go and rob or steal or kill, and it's not because someone told you to, Typically, and almost always, in your mind, in that person's mind, they are saying, well, I'm doing this because I haven't been treated well. I'm doing this because horrible things have been done to me. And sometimes it may not even be consciously. It could be subconsciously where someone has been mistreated for so long that their ability to think rationally has been severely impacted. And so ultimately they are acting under the direction of the influence from others who perhaps didn't take into account how their actions would impact other people. So we get into details for all of this stuff in future videos. We're not gonna be able to, to cover every aspect of everything all at once. So what is another reason we might do things? Uh, there is something that m many of us, most of us, especially in a, in a Western culture, from an early age, from childhood, you are taught and raised to respect authority figures. You are taught that your parents your earliest authority figure is your parents. You're taught that they are an authority figure and you're supposed to do what you're told. Then you're sent into school and your teachers and administrators are the ones in control and you're told to obey and do what you're told. And then when you move out into the workplace, you're told to do what your boss tells you to do. Or if you go into the military or law enforcement, your commanding officer is, is telling you to do. So from an early age, we are taught this structure intentionally to make us compliant and obedient throughout our entire lives and in, inside of this social structure. And the promise that you are given is if you follow orders well enough and you do a good enough job of doing what you're told for long enough, eventually you will be placed in a position of authority where you can then turn around and tell others what to do. For some of you that may sound perfectly reasonable, uh, but at, hopefully as we get more into these topics, you will start to see these things from a differing perspective where uh, perhaps that doesn't sound like the most reasonable thing in the world. And for many of you, if you're co already coming to this topic from a standpoint of liberty, non-aggression, and non-violence, um, then these things will probably sound pretty common sense to you. Like, yeah, telling other people what to do and telling other people how to live isn't very good. Being obedient is not great. And the promise of obedience leading to you being able to be in a position of authority to tell others what to do is, is horrific. It's, it's a really awful way to try and condition a person, but especially as young as we start with, with children. So um, in the future, I will talk about things that I refer to as radical concepts. Uh, but briefly, since it's here now, um, one of those radical concepts is I don't believe, uh, and based on my understanding of the non-aggression prin principle and non-violent communication, that parents, uh, parents should not be acting as authority figures. I don't believe authority exists. I think it's an illusion that is supported only by the willingness of the people who claim to be authorities to do violence uh, or use force or coercion against the people that they are trying to control. So. Um, for a lot of people, obviously, that seems like a pretty radical concept, but we will be exploring it and talking about it in a lot more detail in the future. Okay, so what maybe is uh, the last but not quite as nefarious reason to not take responsibility for what you're doing? Uh, it is social pressure 
trying to please other people or perhaps trying to manipulate other people into doing what you want. And I don't use manipulate in a way that's meant to be malicious, um, but from a standpoint of if you want someone to do something nice for you, if you have a bit of social acumen, you can treat people in a way that makes it more likely that they will be compliant to what you're asking them to do. So in a way, it can be a social tool if, if rather than trying to identify people's needs and uh, work for a solution that meets everyone's needs without anyone having to make sacrifices or compromises, um, it can be expedient to just try and act in a way that maybe you wouldn't otherwise act to try to influence the behavior of others or to try and make others view you in a way that you think is more positive. So without getting into too many specifics, because I hope this video will age well, uh, as it's being recorded right now, in the near past and still present, there are a large number of people who are doing things, being obedient to mandates that they don't agree with and don't want to comply with, but are largely doing so because of social pressure and because they are worried about the way they will be viewed by the other people around them based on the dictates of authority. So uh, hopefully already you're seeing how these things can stack on each other to create extremely negative outcomes for everyone involved, except for her, perhaps the authority figures who are trying to get what they want by using violence and coercion against other people. But I think we'll see in the future that that also doesn't really benefit them very much in the end. So the next topic we want to discuss in personal responsibility is taking responsibility for our feelings. And this isn't less important than taking responsibility for our actions, but I bring it up afterwards because it feeds directly into taking responsibility for our actions because often it is our feelings that are used as justifications for our actions. And so when I talk about taking responsibility for your feelings, what am I talking about? Talking about recognizing that especially negative feelings are not caused by other people, but can be triggered or stimulated by other people. And this may seem like a semantic difference, but it's very important because uh, much like your own actions, if you view other people as responsible for your feelings, then you lose your control and your power over your own emotions. If you believe that other people's actions are what's causing your feelings, anger, sadness, then you are powerless to control your feelings because it's not your fault that you feel the way that you do. It's the way that other people have treated you. Now, the reason, uh, and this can be something that takes a while to learn, but many of you I'm sure can think of situations where, especially if you're an adult now, where perhaps someone saying something childish or insulting to you maybe wouldn't offend you the way it would when you were younger, right? So if you're young and someone says something mean about your dad or your clothes that might upset you, make you sad, as an adult, that might still happen on sometimes, but maybe perhaps a better, more relatable example is if someone that you don't respect says something insulting to you, there's a good chance it's not really going to, to hit you that hard because you don't take that criticism seriously. Um, this is one example. There are obviously a, a variety of examples that I'm sure you can think of in your own life where perhaps someone who's attempting to do something to influence your emotions isn't able to do it because you have control over that. In some cases, that's not the case. Some people are able to say or do things that do make you sad or angry. And again, see that language. They are not the ones making you sad or angry. The reality is that they have taken some action that you have perceived in a way that it has triggered an emotion within you. And when you realize that you can modify your perceptions and use mindfulness, use empathy to try and give yourself a more effective way of responding to those stimulus, to those actions of others, uh, it, makes, it makes you a lot, e uh, a lot more capable of controlling your emotions. An example might be that Let's, let's say you're at your job and you, you've done something that your boss doesn't approve of. And um, your boss comes to you and is dressing you down. Like you, I've told you so many times, you need to do your TPS reports like this and you didn't fill this form out right. And now we have to wait and redo it. You could feel sad and scolded and, and be hard on yourself. And this, depending on your personality or who you are, could even cause things like self-deprecation or depression right? 
However, if you try and view that same situation with an empathetic perspective and you perhaps try and say, well, okay, I, I see that my boss is perhaps communicating with me in a violent way. What is it that is causing that emotion within him? They, they're frustrated because they have a boss that they report to and not having certain things ready can reflect poorly on them. Maybe they've had a tough day. Maybe something's going on at home that's causing them to have, you know, less capacity for dealing with unexpected problems and conflicts. Once you're able to kind of view things through this perspective, instead of taking that personally, you can help empathize with the person talking to you. Hey boss, look, I understand. I made a mistake here. I can tell that this is something that's really bothered you. I'm going to take care of it. We're going to get it all fixed out. I'm going to come to you when I've got this fixed and we're going to make sure that everything's, everything's where it needs to be. By not becoming defensive and not letting your emotions get the best of you, you can get a positive outcome to a situation. Another thing to keep in mind is that sometimes when people come to you in a way that stimulates some uh, feeling or emotional response from you, going back to empathy is to keep in mind that maybe that person didn't know how, that would, how you would respond to that. And I think a lot of you probably know people in your lives who are a little perhaps, perhaps tone deaf in some of these ways, or maybe it's just a genuine, uh, unexpected response like maybe they thought they were coming to you to tell you that uh, there was something you know you got a little stain on your shirt from brushing your teeth this morning and that really upsets you because now you're embarrassed but you were you thought you were being polite and helpful so empathy in general is a very powerful tool for helping people respond to potentially emotionally triggering situations in ways that can be more productive and lead to positive outcomes for everybody and if people are trying to intentionally trigger an emotional response in you by saying things that they know might be triggering or that they hope might be triggering, it can be important to, in the same way that we mentioned with the example of the boss before, understand that if you are triggered, it's most likely because you have some unmet need that has been triggered by that. Maybe you want your boss's approval. Maybe you want to feel like you're doing a good job. And when someone comes to you and tells you, that they don't think that you've done a good job, that can be triggering for you because you have a need to feel like you've done a good job. If you can identify that need in yourself and try to identify ways to get that need met and respond empathetically to yourself and to others, then it gives you an opportunity to have better control of your emotional reactions to external stimulus. So the last thing that I'm gonna talk about is using language that takes responsibility. And you've probably already noticed me trip a few times in this video myself in something that requires constant practice and something that you have to kind of let trigger in your own mind as you become more aware of it. But language is very powerful because not only is it the way that we speak, but it's also the way that we think. And it influences very heavily the way we look at things. And so you can take the same situation using different language and completely change your perspective on it and even your emotional response. And you can see how these start to build on each other, talking about controlling your emotions and taking responsibility for your own feelings and emotions. In the boss example we gave before, if you shape the language in a way that takes responsibility for the entire situation, then you can, you can structure things differently. So first we'll look at it from the way people would probably instinctively respond from the way that they've been raised. So I was at work and I was doing this TPS report and I don't even like these TPS reports. They don't even matter, right? They're just stupid things that the managers require. So I turned it in and then the boss comes and yells at me because I didn't fill out the TPS report right. And it doesn't even, doesn't even really matter, but then he's in my cubicle yelling at me like, like I did something wrong and I'm good at my job. I just, you know, so I made a little mistake on a TPS report. Who cares? Like, it's not a big deal and he doesn't need to be such a dick about it. So now let's look at the same situation where we take responsibility for our actions and our role in this situation. So I'm doing this TPS report that I really don't want to do, but it's required for my job and I really don't want to lose this job. So I'm going to do it. I understand I'm not super motivated to be detail oriented on it. So I missed a detail on it and, and it was a detail that was important to my boss. And so he came to me to let me know that I didn't do the report correctly. And he seemed upset when he told me. So it's possible that his boss is, is being upset at him or maybe he just had a long day. So I can try I can understand maybe why this was upsetting for him, but 
I did make the mistake, so I'm gonna correct it, get back to the boss so that, so that they can hopefully get this submitted, make things better for them, and just gonna move on. You can see when you, when you use the, the exact same situation, but restructure it and use different language to help yourself process it and take responsibility for what's happening, not only are you now no longer powerless, now you're not stuck in a job where you're doing things you don't wanna do, but you have to do them, and now your boss is angry at you because you didn't do something right. Instead, you're choosing to do things that you wouldn't otherwise do because you wanna get the paycheck for the job that you're doing, and you made a mistake, your boss confronted you on it, maybe he wasn't super nice about it, but, you're gonna correct the mistake and you're gonna move on. I mean, it's it can be a dramatic difference and I'm not trying to pretend that this kind of stuff is easy, but it is something that you can do that is accomplishable and with practice and conscious effort, you can do better over time. So getting back to this as a larger solution for societal problems and maybe touching again on the authority issue because again, the point of these videos is to address philosophically core issues that you encounter. So when you deal with things on a larger scale, societal issues as they're called, when we abstract responsibility away from the individual, and you look at things like political conflict, geopolitics, all of these things that create collective institutions and then pit them against each other in violent ways, if you can reframe those situations in ways where you only hold individuals responsible for what they've done, then you start to see the whole system kind of reveal itself for what it is. So uh, a good recent example of what happened is, say you have a country and they take some action of dropping bombs on some other arbitrary set of lines on the map, some other people, right? Some people might say that the person in charge, the president has made the decision to drop bombs on another country, which Sounds like something that you could get worked up and argue with people about. Your person who leads your political party did something to a country, some abstract collection of people, and, and that's good or bad based on your perspective. Well, if you break it down into individual responsibility, then yes, an individual either wrote something on a piece of paper or made a phone call and said, hey, someone should go and drop explosives on some people on the other side of the world. And someone with a name, let's call him Bob. I'm sorry if your name is Bob, I'm not trying to pick on you, but Bob goes, gets in a plane because he was told to, right? Bob chooses because he's got a paycheck to earn to get into a plane, fly up in the air, drop an explosive on other people. Let's give them names, uh, Billy, Janet, and Carl and they get killed by this explosion. So all of, a all of a sudden, it wasn't the president dropping bombs on a foreign country. Bob killed three people because he wanted a paycheck. When you don't allow collectivism and the abstraction of personal responsibility, and you just, today on the news, Bob blows up three people he didn't know. Well, that's not okay, right? Oh, well, it's because those three people live in the same country as another person, uh, Robert, who really doesn't like us, and if he had the opportunity, might kill somebody. Okay, well, that's a pretty weak justification for anything, isn't it? I mean, did the three people who blew up, did you know who they were? Were they specifically doing something? Like, were they in the process of, like, attacking somebody? Or were they in the wrong place at the wrong time? Were they part of some collective structure that you labeled as bad? And because you're just doing your job, you went and killed people that you've never even met, that you have no idea who they are or what they're doing. And this can be applied to so many situations. Matter of fact, as you start to address problems in the world, I think what you will find is that this kind of abstraction of personal responsibility is always present. Because fundamentally, people, when they interact directly with each other, aren't really horrible, right? It takes a lot of negative stimulus. It takes a lot of influence and violence used against someone to cause them to want to do harm to other people. 
I mean, if you think about babies and children, they fundamentally don't try to hurt each other until they are taught, usually early on by their parents, that authority exists and the way to get what you want is to hurt other people and to try and make them do what you want. So we're going to stop right there. There's obviously more to discuss on, on these topics, but that is an overview uh, with some detail on the importance of personal responsibility, individual responsibility, and avoiding unnecessarily collectivizing people. So I'm Skyler. Thanks for watching and see you guys next time.